I'm working on chopping up some slate for my stepping stone. I'm gonna make a stained glass stepping stone, just like this one, actually. And it has some stained glass in it, and then it's surrounded by slate. And it's really easy to make. And the cool part is that if you have a long border that everybody always tromps through because they just don't care, then you put the stepping stone where all the footprints are. And even for the cat, it's nice. You know, the cat appreciates the, the respect that you've shown it. So um, this is just a bunch of roofing slate I got from a roofer who didn't really want it because it's all in chunks. And, um, and this is my assortment of stained glass over here. And there's all kinds of different colors. I really like glass, but you have to know how to cut it. Because most of the time people, they'll use one of these little guys, a glass cutter, but they only know how to cut straight lines. But it's actually really easy to cut curvy lines. So to get started, you're gonna need to get yourself some stained glass. You're gonna need to get yourself a little bit of slate if you're using slate, or you could do the whole entire surface in stained glass if that's more the mood you're in. So to start with, you gotta have, of course, the gloves and the safety equipment and these pliers. You go to a stained glass shop and get these. There's two, two kinds that you might want to have. These are breaking pliers, okay, and they've got a nice wide head on them. And they, they're used when, you, when you've when you scored the glass and you want to just clip it off, okay? And then these are called grozers. These are the coolest things I've ever seen. Look, they just nibble away at the glass so that you can adjust the shape. You can tweak the shape of the pieces that you've cut. And they, they can also be used to de-sharpen the edges because you don't want anybody's little bare feet cut on the glass stepping stone you made to try to make your life nicer. So let's start by cutting up some glass. This is a glass cutter. It's really hacked up and old. Hopefully you'll get a newer one. But th this little tiny blade actually scores the glass just enough that you can break it. It's just the suggestion on the surface of the glass. See, look. Let's do a leaf because it's kind of curvy. Okay, so pick the side of the glass that you want to show. I think this is better. And then you just take, now, if it's not cutting well, sometimes you have to run it through a little bit of oil, three-in-one oil. But you just take it like that. You hear that sound? And I'll just finish the arc going the other way. Now that looks like a completely impossible shape to break, but, and it probably is, because I'm showing off, really. Well, it sort of works. Now the longer you, see, it's curvy. Now the longer you, and I just used my bare hands, well, my gloved hands, because I'm used to it now, but you might want to use the breaking pliers, because that might make you a bit nervous, what I just did. So what you can do is cut another curvy bit like that, and then just take the breaking pliers and put it as close to the line that you did as possible, and then just break it. See? See. So this is a pretty nice curve, which I broke, but it's got one little dimply bit here that I want to get rid of. So I'll take the grossing pliers and just kind of nibble it down. There. Now it's more or less smooth. All right? Now, if this were the, my leaf, it's not quite the right shape yet, so I have to just take another pass, like that, and then there, pretty. See, it's nothing big, fancy thing. Then the, the spine goes up the middle, like that, and again, moving quickly, like so. And then I want to put the little veins in, so I'm going to do that. I've really begun to notice how taking a little quiet time allows the mind to release precious, long-buried memories. Like that day in kindergarten when we all decided to eat the paste. So it's hard to actually make the shape of a flower out of your own mind, so because it doesn't come out that good. <laughs> I've been here a while. So what I think I would suggest is you actually look at a flower and then, you know, some, well, this is, I'm trying to go for a rose here. So, you know, there's a certain kind of a, an intensity going on in the middle. So I kind of got that swirling thing happening. And then it just, the petals are, in some roses, they get darker as, as you know, the center's light. So I kind of am distinguishing 
from the center by using darker colors. And anyway, if you have to say to people, it's a rose, <laughs> when you're done, then it's just part of your charm. And they should like you anyway, because after all, you invited them over to your house to see your stepping stone. See, that looks sort of like a flower. And then, and then what's also really neat is that you break the, remember how I was showing you to break the leaves up a little bit? So then the mortar, if you look here, the mortar fills in where the veins are on the leaf, and so it looks kind of arty. See, pretty. Okay, so now that's done. You want to grab some clear contact paper and just um, peel it off and smack it down right on top of that whole flower. Be Aw. Oh, I'm going to lose hair on this one. Oh, ow, ow, ow. Okay, it's staticky, so watch out for that. Drop this over without disturbing anything. Like this. And now press it down. Like this. And if, if, if any of the little bits are still not quite right, you can just adjust them slightly as you go. And you leave a lot of space because you want the mortar to be able to flow between the cracks. If they're too narrow, it just can't. The grits of sand in the mortar will, will stop it from flowing. Okay, so now that's done. You flip it over. Now that is gonna lie in the bottom of the form. So the concrete is gonna be, you know, walls need to form. So how are you gonna do that? Well, you go and you get this pink stuff that they use when they're sheathing buildings in construction. They sell it in two inch thick sheets, okay? It looks like there's two sheets glued together, but that's just because they lap it. Okay, so you need one of these, and then what you do is you cut it up into smaller bits like this. And then you take a knife and you cut a hole in it like this, and then you put it down on top of your contact paper like this. Whoa. In a, pl in a pleasing sort of a manner. And actually, it's a good idea to, because you want the concrete to relief, release from it later, it's a good idea to uh, put petroleum jelly all around this edge now, as opposed to later. There, it's just gonna go like this. And now I'm gonna actually put the whole thing on a piece of plywood so that I, I, I can tap it later. And the reason I wanna tap it later is because the concrete tends to have bubbles in it, and then you end up with a big bubbly pattern, and that's no good. So everything lands up on the plywood like this. And we have petroleum jelly all over here, which is good. And now you can just take your pieces of slate to fill in around it. Now, the slate, which I was showing you before, you just hammer a nail or a nail set through the slate to make these holes, and then you just use your hands to break it apart. It is sharp, so be careful, but it's also a lot faster to break up a whole bunch of pieces of slate rather than individually custom cutting every single piece of slate to fit. Okay, so you get your pile of slate and you just start laying it around the edges. This glass still has its price tag. That's just part of what's going to be totally immortalized in concrete, really. Okay, I'm just securing the mold, the styrofoam mold to the base, the plywood base, with screws. And I, and I have actually used washers because they hold the foam down a little bit steadier. The screws, just they just go in and they don't really grab. So you have to use the washer to help you. Okay, so this is the point we're at. It's kind of the climax. It's when we mix the mortar. Now, the mortar is, oh, that baby's heavy. See how it looks like a layer cake? This top layer is mortar. It's much finer than concrete. Concrete has stones in it, so they wouldn't work to flow around all the, the pretty glass. So you have to use mortar as the top layer, and then for strength, you use the concrete on the bottom. And we're gonna make it even stronger with a special device I've come up with. Okay, so the mortar is you, ha you ha buy usually about a 50 pound bag of mortar, so you probably want to make a few stepping stones. And here's the deal you got to wear the gloves because this stuff just eats your hands. It's very, very alkaline, and that means that it's going to burn your hands with an alkaline burn, and it's just no good at all. So wear the gloves. And you're going to want to put. Um, this stuff, it's admixture. It's kind of like an acrylic or concrete glue. 
and it makes them a lot stronger than if you just add water. Especially if you live in a place where the, it freezes, you really want to make them strong. So about 12 cups of this stuff built one of my big stepping stone forms. Okay, now you want to add this white stuff or, or water if that's all you have. And the whole deal here is to not get the consistency wrong. And I'm completely bad at this, but maybe I'll just be lucky today. Usually I get it too wet. So you want it, um, you want it kind of like a risotto, you know, where you scrape it across the bottom and it's not just soupy, it's not falling back into place. But you have to have a subtle hand with the, the moisture. Oh shoot, you see? Okay. That was too much, okay? Oh. too gloopy. It's still a bit wet though, so let's just be honest about it. Okay, 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 now we're getting it here. See, it should, it should almost clean the bottom of the wheelbarrow as it goes. If it's doing this, the river thing where it's all gloppy, that's no good. Okay, this is good. They say that effort only fully releases its reward after a person refuses to quit. But you have to wonder when exactly is after. Because if what you're feeling right now is the reward, well, you might as well have quit earlier. Okay, so. I'm going to slide this over so it's close to my wheelbarrow. And I'm just going to use the drier stuff on this side of the wheelbarrow because it's, see, it's, it's about right. This stuff's too, way too goopy over here. All right, so I'm going to start at the edges and I'm going to work in. So that way the, the pieces, if they are floating a little bit, they'll push to the middle rather than pushing to the outside. And it's really important to um, see what I'm doing blah, 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 like this. You kind of vibrate it a little bit because there are bubbles. And you want to get the bubbles out if you can. OK, so now once you're all done and everything's covered, just smooth it out a little bit. And this is the magic thing where if you, especially if you live in a place where it freezes, you really have to guard against the, the stone cracking and heaving. So you need to reinforce it with a piece of chicken wire, which I put somewhere special. And it, uh, it just, here it is. <laughs> okay, this is chicken wire. So it just sits inside the form like this. The big trick is not to cut this too big. It should be about half an inch in from the outside edge. Because if the metal is sticking out, it ends up just um, corroding and then it, the rust creeps all through the form and eventually it'll break up. Okay, so that's our reinforcement stuff. Now, I've got too much mortar left in my pail, so in my um, wheelbarrow, so I'm going to have to go clean that out. Normally, if it works out just perfectly, you can now mix the concrete into the, this, but I got way too much left over here, so I got to go dump it into a bucket and get rid of it, and then we'll mix concrete to pour over this. <clears throat> When you spend time quietly working away at something, your individuality begins to assert itself. The renowned actress Tallulah Bankhead put it this way, Nobody can be exactly like me. Even I have trouble doing it. See those big rocks? See, that's a really big rock. Oh no, that's just powder. But see, the, those rocks make the concrete a lot stronger 
that's called aggregate, and it's in mortar. The aggregate is is um, sand, so it's just not as strong. Okay, it's getting crucial. Okay, just a little bit more, just a little. See how it, it just it's getting crucial. See how look how wet that got very suddenly. It got too wet. It got too wet again. Look at it. It's too wet. Okay, so see these little bubbles that are forming all over the surface? They get trapped against the, the glass. If That's why I was saying before, you have to vibrate this thing to make the bubbles come to the bad side. And then you can, wahoo. Hey, if you get any on you, you have to, it, like it burns a little bit, so you have to use some vinegar. So it's always good to just have some vinegar standing by in case you slime yourself. Okay, now I keep talking about vibrating this thing. That's why we have the plywood here. See, look. You do that. Now, this is like the opposite of how you'd be treating a baked product. But you want to keep doing that till all these little bubbles stop coming to the surface. OK? It's kind of like you can have your own stomp out in the garage. Yeah. Yeah, you know what would have worked a little better was if I had beveled the outside a little bit because I'm having trouble getting this. Really? Isn't that surprising? I'm having trouble. It's concrete. I'm going to have trouble every time. It's really stuck. So it would have helped if I beveled it so that it would just, you know, like a cake pan is beveled so that the cake just pops out. Or a muffin tin or any number of things I could have used the example of. But no, I chose to make, oh, OK. OK, well, we won't be reusing this mold, I'm afraid. Now, when you peel the contact paper off, see, there's quite a few bubbles, actually. I thought I'd gotten them out, but don't worry. Because I use the admixture stuff, it has a kind of slick, almost plasticky appearance. If you use water, it usually doesn't have that appearance. But I like to rough this up a little bit. So I'm going to use a wire brush once I break away the rest of this form. I'm really, s OK, so you'll know better, OK? Because it, it, it just needs to be beveled. OK, so there, look, pretty. See, two layers, just like a cake. And I'll just take a wire brush, and I'll put my safety glasses on, and just score up the surface a little bit. And especially around the glass and the slate, I want to take away um, the ridges and stuff so that it's all smooth. See, so that reduces the appearance of the bubbles. And also, uh, around the edges, you might want to break that up a bit, too. And you really have to work at the glass, because especially if you've used acrylic admixture, it really sticks on the face of the glass. So be ruthless and scrape it off till you have your perfect pattern. And then just take a damp cloth and wipe the whole thing down. And there's your beautiful stepping stone. So pretty. All right, so now, clearly, once you know how to work with glass, you've got a lot more options in life. For example, Marsha Christ makes stained glass. This is one of her pieces, actually a couple of them. And uh, there, you can see she knows how to cut curves. She's done some beautiful work here. And she loves working with glass, even though she's a sculptor and a painter, because she says that they, um, it's like working with solid color. She did this stepping stone, too. Now, this is much more geometric than what I did, but it's gorgeous. 
And then down in front is uh, an artist named Judy Waymark, and she's made a table, a top surface from stained glass. She used to be a tattoo artist, so she, she has kind of a freehand way of working with the glass. It's less geometric. So, you know, you could have that tattooed on your bum if you thought that was the spot for it. I know I would be thinking about that. So, okay, here's, once again, my beautiful thing, and just, just try it. I mean, what have you got to lose except your pride when it comes to concrete, right? Do you ever notice that right at the end of a project there's this magical moment when you actually do feel serenely quiet? Because you've been engaged in something worthwhile and now it's done. Kind of like when you give blood and then they hold up that little warm bag at the end. That's when you know you've really done something good. Plus they give you a cookie. 